Hey, hello. You're stuck in traffic with a, a sick Wolfgang Cork. A couple minute riff on IT and IT security. You know, today we're looking at beating the odds, and I've got this freaking ankle, and it's really a bad time to have it. I was under the weather yesterday when I was given the, the keynote of the conference. Uh, I feel worse today, and I've got a stack of meetings ahead of me as soon as I park, <laughs> including, including presenting a, a major initiative to a, a client. So, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. But it got me thinking, you know, we're always operating under less than ideal conditions. And the tip is, the trick is, to put in place things that, you know, create luck, right? Create chances for success, give us time to recover when we fail, uh, and amplify any like, likely wins. Part of that is, part of that is, looking at how a system is put together and looking at something called like a Swiss cheese model, right? You may have seen this Swiss cheese fall model, which is you take a, a stack of Swiss cheeses, right? Slice, 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 slice. And you draw a line through all the holes. That indicates the holes in each layer of a process that allowed a fault to continue through the system until it reached the end and caused an impact. One of the ways to uh, alleviate is to identify all those different systems to pass through and figure out how you can close a few of those holes, right? And recognizing that each one of those holes, when you close them, is not going to be 100%. It's not always going to work. People are going to be sick. Uh, the system's not going to be booted up right. There's going to be something else going on that takes your attention. You'll be in the middle of DR while someone's doing a, de a denial of service attack, right? There's a number of things that can happen. So you look at each one of those layers, and you try to increase the odds in each one of those layers. So when you do instant response, and you use the Swiss cheese model, and you go ahead and look at each one of those layers, then we can start to say, okay, what can we put in place? <clears throat> and when we look at what we can put in place, we recognize, hey, what is it doing? What's its cost? And what's the likelihood of success? The last part's pretty key. A lot of times we'll stop and say, well, we don't necessarily want to put this control in place because uh, of the likelihood, right? We don't necessarily want to do a fishing program because, yeah, we may get 50% of our people then reporting fishing attempts, uh, but half our people still will click that link anyway, so it's not worth it. We don't necessarily want to run AV because AV is only successful 50% of the time. We don't necessarily want to run uh, run DLP because uh, because people could put stuff in zip files and still sneak it past us, right? Every one of these controls is only going to be so effective. So we need to look at it not as any one control is the end all be all, not as any one control closes the hole in a piece of cheese, but each control increases a percentage of likelihood that will be successful. And each control adds redundancy along that path because, 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 because things are going to go wrong. And it's not going to end up always the way we want. So check out that model, the Swiss cheese fault model. Uh, take a look at your instant response, like uh, after action reports, and see if you are falling prey to, oh, if we only had this one control, we'd be okay. Or we're not going to do this other control because it's, you know, only X percent effective. Controls are going to fail. People are going to fail. People are going to get sick. So just look at ways you can improve the odds at each layer. That's it. Have a good one.